Well, Susan, here we are in your amazing backyard and the fragrance of the roses are just so overpowering, absolutely stunning. Tell me a little bit about your approach to rose growing and what captivates you and how you've been able to maintain such a beautiful backyard. Sure, sure. Well, once I discovered the older roses, the shrub roses, the roses that were actually hybridized for garden use, uh -huh. I realized how easy care they are. They were created before the advent of a lot of um, chemical pest intervention and fertilizer, so they're meant to just be planted like a hydrangea or a rhododendron and just kind of left alone with some easy pruning. So the most important thing I think for shrub roses like this, the first three years you have them, is to keep them watered during right. drought. Uh, water is the best fertilizer and it really guarantees the health of the plant. They really don't get sick with spots and things until they get a little heat stressed and we get a little drought. One rose that's particularly amazing is uh, the rose here on the brick wall. Yeah. It's called Mel's Heritage and it's named after a gentleman named Mel Hulse who essentially founded the San Jose Heritage Rose Garden which is 10 acres of roses. Wow. Wow. The ramblers here, like Mel's Heritage, and this one over here on the fence, the whitish pinkish one, that, that is called Alpen Fee. The ramblers are usually once blooming in the spring with very flexible canes. Okay. So they need to be allowed to ramble. Run up something. That's right. Trellises, fence lines. That's right. And once they get to be of a certain size, they don't even really need to be tied in because mm. it, they cling to themselves. It's kind of weaving in. Mm -hmm. And gotcha. the only maintenance that you have to do with them is after the bloom, you just want to take out the dead wood and do a little trimming for size. Okay. But because they do only bloom in the, in the spring, you don't want to cut them back any later than maybe August or you'll take bloom for the next year. This is a great shrub rose. This is a modern rose from an English gentleman named Peter Beals. And this rose is called Flamenco Rosita. Beautiful color. Yes, it is. Rich. It's, it's a beautiful color. It blooms all summer long. Literally, uh -huh. you can see all the buds that are starting. It's already bloomed for the last month or so. Just a repeat bloomer on and off through all the season. Always, as, as much as, as a knockout. You have a, an assortment of companion plantings to your rose garden and this one in particular behind the fountain the uh, clematis that is just coming into full bloom. Clematis are the perfect companion plant with roses because even though they climb and twine they're not heavy okay. so they're not going to damage your rose in any way or compete with your rose in any way they like the same kind of moist deep soil they like their roots shaded mm -hmm. same as the rose and their flowers up in the sun the possibilities really are endless for how you want to combine colors and bloom season. The rose there that you see now only blooms once, but the clematis will bloom all summer long. Well, Cranesville, which is actually a geranium, because you know a geranium is a pelargonium, right. Right? right? So the Cranesville down there below the clematis, that rich purple flower, that will bloom for six weeks or so in okay. the spring and early summer and it spreads to create a ground cover which suppresses weeds. Some of the varieties have interesting foliage. They are wonderful to put at the base of roses. Anything that can shade those roots really makes the rose happy. Mm. I have quite a bit about. of Japanese anemone. I use a lot of nepeta or catmint. Yep. Yep. That is Great a spreader. wonderful ground cover. The more that you can plant under the roses, the less the roses will have to compete with the weeds. Yep. And they're just a lot happier. Gotcha. And something to keep in mind when you're doing this kind of low maintenance uh, style of rose planting, where I know a lot of people tend to panic when they see things in roses that may be out of place, like a defoliation along the, the lower limbs and or maybe some black spot or powdery mildew on the leaf surfaces. That's not something to be overly concerned about, is it? That's just, that's just kind of a, a, bit of their, a bit of their habit. There's ways around it. You don't have to go ahead and, and panic too much, right? Right, absolutely. The, these roses will all shake off just about any kind of pest or disease you can throw at them. 
you just have to learn to live with a little bit of spot. Mm -hmm. That's why companion plantings are important so that you're not just focused on the shrub, but it's more of kind of an impressionistic type feeling that your eye gets. When you do see some spot on your roses, you can actually pluck them off by hand and your rose will produce new leaves within a couple of weeks. So one thing I would recommend when you're starting off is to keep your rose in a pot for a season and determine if it likes that spot. Okay. You know, right rose, right place. Right, right. And Susan, as I'm standing here in your garden, everything just looks so healthy for you to not have a heavy spray regimen. Can you mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about some of your favorite soil amendments and feeding techniques to keep them so robust? Absolutely. I think that composted manure, any kind of compost actually, it loosens up our clay, yep. but it still allows it to retain the moisture they need. Roses love moist soil, just not boggy. So anytime you can top dress with compost, prepare the hole with compost, bone meal is excellent. Actually, any kind of organic help, fish emulsion, yep. things like that, if you want to use a liquid feed, okay. anything organic is good for them. I even use you know, my great grandmother's methods of the banana peels yeah. with potassium, the the eggshells, yep. et cetera. They, they like anything you can give them, really. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. And we have a really healthy, beautiful, uh, purple rambler climbing rose. Tell me a little bit about this variety here. This is an old rose. It was hybridized in Germany probably around the late 1800s. It is called Velkenblau. And when I got this rose, I left it in the pot and it's still in the pot. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> <laughs> and you can see how it's just growing right it's through just, it. It's just, yeah. Right Nothing slows it down. It's it's kind of taken over the boxwood hedge, and um, the great thing about these once bloomers, they they bloom usually in multiple clusters. Mm -hmm. So you have all stages of bloom at one time. You have the buds, you have the newly opened buds, you have the fading, and that's what gives it this kind of multiple color effect, rather than just all monochrome lavender and then you've got these little yellow stamens here it just makes it a real cheerful and interesting rose such a full cluster of them right here and then behind us we're covered in just another single petal white variety is this another single flowering or is this a multiple uh, th flowering this season? one will repeat this rose is called francis e lester and it was hybridized by uh mr lester who was a great friend and lover of the rose. And it's it's simple, but it has such a charm, absolutely healthy. Mm -hmm. It needs some room to grow. You yeah. know, the, la the larger ramblers and shrubs, they need some room to grow. Not that you have to keep them massive, but you just don't want to continuously prune a rose that wants to grow. You need to choose the, the mature size for your location can't help but notice just looks like a magazine cover page here with this beautiful specimen rose that you have growing over an old dogwood tree just absolutely stunning tell me a little bit about this variety this is a found rose meaning that someone found it okay. and decided to propagate it this one was found in California in the town of Arcata and it goes by the name Arcata Pink Globe. Hmm. It's also known as the Moser Shed Rose because it had completely covered a shed on the Moser property huh. that had been there since the mid 1800s, but no one knows its official given name. Wow. So that remains a bit of a mystery. There are theories about what rose it could be, and there are people who actually spend a lot of time trying to figure out the given name of this rose, but it doesn't really matter, does it? This is incredible. <laughs> and for, for your, you were talking a little bit about what is legal and what is illegal to propagate with found roses or patented roses. Can you talk to a little bit about that? Sure, a, a rose patent in the United States is good for 25 years. If you and I created a rose and named it Matt's Joy. Okay, I like that. We would have the rights to sell that rose for 25 years wow. as Matt's Joy. After 25 years, you could reapply for the patent. Most hybridizers don't. So after that time has elapsed, anyone is free to propagate the rose. Hmm. 
And that's the great thing about the old roses too, is that you can propagate them and pass them along to your friends. If you see them out um, in the wild somewhere or, or something I do a lot of here in Nashville is try to save them from the bulldozers. Yes. You can take a few cuttings and, and propagate your own. Nice. It's just important when you do take cuttings, always ask permission. Sure. And, and don't endanger the health of the rose. Sure. But a vigorous rose like this, you could take you know, as many as you wanted. And doing it the right way, it's very important to keep the heritage alive in some of these strains that have been around for hundreds of years and making sure that they, some of these beauties just don't go extinct. Absolutely. This variety has a rather unromantic name. It's Garden Director Otto Lynn. Okay who was a gentleman in Germany, and he's the creator of the rose. I think if it was named Fairy's Dream, <laughs> it would be in every garden <laughs> right. across the world. Right. But it is an absolutely fantastic rose. Again, it blooms in clusters, so you get the variances and nuances mm -hmm. of the colors as the buds age. It blooms all summer long. It's all loaded. you have to do, yeah, you just cut off the cluster wow. and it makes another one. It's healthy all summer long yeah. it's got these kind of glossy leaves usually the glossy leaves can fight the black spot a little bit better than the matte okay and and it's absolutely a carefree plant wow and for viewers out there that are looking to purchase these older varieties of roses do you have any tips on where they can find some of these tough older absolutely, varieties absolutely absolutely the antique rose emporium in Brenham, Texas is a wonderful mail order nursery. They sell a little bit bigger plants than some other nurseries, which mm -hmm. are helpful for beginners. There's also a wonderful nursery. Pat Henry in South Carolina has Roses Unlimited. Okay. And she has from the, the very earliest roses all the way up to the moderns, hmm. thousands of beautiful, beautiful roses. She takes very good care of them. I highly recommend both those nurseries. Nice, good to know. Tell me a little bit about this one here. This is a beautiful rose. It's called Poseidon. It was hybridized by Tom Carruth of Weeks Roses. He is very much into the blues and hmm. purples, the hmm. unusual shades. Really and this is an amazing rose. It blooms all summer long. It, it is healthy all summer long. It can be kept as a smaller shrub. I kind of experiment every year to see if I want to prune it and keep it short mm -hmm. or just let it kind of go, grow big. And I've realized that when, when I let the main canes grow bigger, then I get shoots, lateral shoots from the main canes. So it just doubles the flowers. Wow, this thing's huge. It's like <laughs> six, seven feet tall. It is. Lightly staked. Yeah, not, not, yeah. No major heavy staking no, in here. No. Just seems to perform well when you just kind of let it go to its own devices. It's, it's very, it looks very black spot resistant. It is. So Susan, as we're walking around, I learned a little bit about the difference between rambling and climbing roses. Tell me again about um, the details of how they are different and what you have to do to really make sure that they stay healthy in the garden. Sure, uh, ramblers are very vigorous and usually once bloomers and they ramble, thus their name. This one's going up a cherry tree and essentially I just kind of toss the canes over a limb, mm -hmm. wrap them around. They don't require any care at all. I don't believe I even deadheaded this one last year and it produced beautiful hips yep. that you can cut and use in your autumn and holiday arrangements. Okay. And then as far as this beautiful yellow one that you have off to your right oh, here, yes. tell me about this one. This is a climber or a rambler? This, this is a climber. This is a, a rose from Cordis. It's called Golden Fairy Tale. All the Cordis fairy tale roses are very healthy. You can see the leaves are, are just as green as can be. Mm -hmm. And once you remove the older blooms, new blooms will come very rapidly. It's a wonderful rose. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see here, the buds are very orange. Like a tangerine, yeah. They are, they're, they're very interesting and they're super bright as the rose begins to open up and then it just fades to this nice soft golden yellow. It's really been a pleasure walking around your backyard and, and really love the philosophy that you have when it comes to your antique rose varieties and your shrub rose varieties that low maintenance 
can be key in some of these rose growing techniques and it's just it's pleasant to see a, a sustainable organic approach to rose growing and I just want to thank you so much for your time and attention to your backyard. Well thank you I'm glad that y'all came I I hope that people will see how easy it is to grow roses how beautiful they can be if just left to their own devices if you plant you know some other plants with them so that you'll always have bloom and attract different types of insects I think you'll be really really happy with the antique roses they're they're so fragrant and so cheerful and exuberant and they just really ask for so little it's nice beautiful for inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.